Approximately 19.4 million women aged between 15 years and older live at risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer, according to the Cancer Association of South Africa. This makes uh, breast cancer one of the most common cancers among women in South Africa. And while breast cancer may be rare in men, its occurrence steadily rising. Bahai to Dumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, uh, we take a closer look at uh, breast cancer as October marks National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We explore the latest breast cancer statistics, breast cancer impacts on mental health and the occurrence of breast cancer in men and more. Now, joining us tonight, uh, Professor Carol Ann Van, who is the specialist uh, breast surgeon and Jeanette Ngabin, the patient navigator for the Breast Health Foundation and a survivor of uh, breast cancer. They're joining us uh, this evening. Prof, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Much appreciated. It's an absolute pleasure. And your introduction was so spot on because we, we forget that breast cancer is neither ageist, racist. It happens to anyone. Sexist, it happens to men, it happens to women. It happens to young women, it happens to old women. So we need to know our norm. We need to encourage people to know that 65% of people who get breast cancer have no risk factors whatsoever. So, yeah, you, you know, it's a very serious, um, yeah. uh, you know, topic. A lot of people never even, they'll just say, look, uh, it's breast cancer, it's nothing major and stuff. Yeah. But I want us to start the conversation by just looking at the significance yeah. of October as far as breast cancer awareness uh, movement uh, is concerned and why months like these are important for the course? I think these are such important months because the whole world sits up and goes, this is a global problem. And there's an opportunity, particularly around media, to make awareness out there. So media, you guys play the most pivotal role because we want people to listen and go, did they say that it's not about whether your mother or your father has had it? It can happen to anyone because people don't think that. And they don't think that a 24 year old can get a breast cancer. And they think if they've exercised and done everything right and it's not in their family, that they can't get a breast, ca breast cancer. The other important issue is you want to know how to examine your breast, know your norm, men and women. And if you've got a lump and a discharge from your nipple or something doesn't feel right, you need to know where to access service. That is often a big problem. I've got a problem, where do I go? And that for me is my major priority, making sure we have equitable care for people, whether they have medical insurance or not, to good service. Mm. I mean, the, you look at South Africa in yeah. its entirety, very diverse, yeah. uh, you know, people from different ethnic uh, backgrounds and genetic backgrounds yes. also. I mean, um, you, you did highlight that, look, it doesn't, it, it doesn't know color. Yes, uh, it absolutely. actually, you know, every single person, um, you know, gets affected by this. But I want us also to touch on it, on the issue of man. Do we yes. find it in men also? Absolutely. In fact, Sub-Saharan Africa has the highest incidence of male breast cancer in the world. So usually it's 1% of the female numbers. We have about 2 to 3% of um, a slightly higher increase in male breast cancer. So we see it. And I've actually written on, on issues around cultural issues around it, particularly in men, because we quite a, you know, take our shirts off, yeah. it's a beautiful weather out there, and there's a pink stigma to the disease. So men don't, they're a little embarrassed about yeah. why am I getting a woman's disease, what could it be? And also we see many men with male boobs, moobs, which are not related to breast cancer, but again, if you feel something on one side and it's not right, you still need to access care. I've treated 27-year-old gym stars and 23-year-old men with breast cancer. Um, so it's out there. I think Beyonce's dad had a breast cancer. Mm. Oh, great. Normally, how do you see it? You know, how do you find that, look, this is it. I think there is a lump or something. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite fussy about people understanding their norm. So the first start is know your body. Don't be shy to take your clothes off. Give your, your breasts, particularly women, you know, gravity is not our friend, a little bit of a jiggle. Lift your arms up, check if nothing's pulling in your nipple. 
feel for lumps, feel for changes on the nipple, changes in color, funny glands, no matter what your age is, then you mustn't be rushing into surgery. Something as simple as an ultrasound can often tell us what it is. And if we're worried, a needle biopsy. And again, don't rush in because people need to understand medical costs before they rush in. So you don't have to sell houses and cars for good care. Good care all should have, whether they have insurance or not. Very important. Prof, before I let you go, um, I mean, how do we then destigmatize this? Yeah. Uh, people getting the necessary care yeah. that they need without yeah. worrying yeah. that uh, actually people are talking behind my back. 100%. So I think I'm wearing the shirt, friends don't let friends fight cancer alone. And the issue is access into foundations, navigators, speak to people who've been there, make sure there are people to walk with you on your journey, ensure that you go for care in the right places. So we offer service to people irrespective of funding. And what we want to know is that you don't have to lose your breast, men or women. We can do breast saving operations. Not everyone needs chemo. So it's the mental health of knowing who your ghost busting team is. Who's going to walk with you and guide you so you can check your doctors, make sure they're offering you correct services, what all your options are available and where you can seek help. So it's together we can. Prof, much appreciated. Thanks for your time. That uh, Professor Carol Ben, who is a specialist uh, breast surgeon. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure. Much appreciated. Okay. Let us take a quick uh, break. Uh, we're coming back and continue with the conversation just on the other side. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we started the conversation on breast cancer awareness, rather breast cancer awareness and what the current situation is in the country. Joining us in studio uh, is uh, uh, Jeanette Nkabinde, who is a patient navigator and a survivor of breast cancer there. She's joining us in studio now. Jeanette, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us. How are you? Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Just want us to talk about, just before we get into the survivorship of the whole uh, ordeal and stuff, let's talk about what a patient uh, navigator is, what the person does. Okay. Um Patient navigator is a person who does usually what we do from the point where a patient is being diagnosed. We take the patient through the treatment. We sit with the patient down. We explain about the um, diagnosis to a patient because you know um, when the patient is being diagnosed, they become so overwhelmed and they tend not to understand what is the doctor saying to them. So we explain to them thoroughly and as well as the treatment plan. Mm. Um, I mean, you've went through this whole uh, process. Maybe just share with us, you know, your experience, you know, when you were first diagnosed and then how did you work around the situation and just, uh, you know, become a patient navigator now. Now you're advocating, uh, you know, positive when it comes to, to, to this, how did you, um, you know, go through this whole thing? How was the experience? Uh, and then also now you're here and then you're advocating, you know, uh, for, 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 for the pink nation, if I might put it that way. Mm. I can start by saying um, it's not an easy journey. Honestly speaking, not an easy journey, um, but it needs a lot of support um for a patient to go through this journey because you know first thing that comes to mind um when you're being diagnosed it's death you're just thinking ah, i'm gonna die you know so you just need lots and lots of support from your family from other people they don't even have family from your loved ones you know so you need to be supported by all means Mm. It's not about um, financially only when well, you need financial, mentally, and physical support as well. Mm. In terms of community support, um, how does the community understand uh, breast cancer? I mean, yes, we, we, we see a lot of programs that are happening from various healthcare, mm. you know, community health centers and, and other uh, community health workers that are spreading the word. 
but how is the message cascaded you know across communities is it getting through or people still feel a bit shy to talk about this as a patient navigator we are um we are sending the message through because what we do we educate at our local clinic and we do as a um, as you know, that is a, um, what is it, um, breast cancer month. We do awareness, we go to schools, we go to churches, we educate as much as we can to uh, people. But yes, um, most of the community don't have enough information about this. And yes, they still don't wanna talk about most of them because you you find people who come to the clinic very late at the later stage and they will tell you that you know, it only occurred last week or yesterday, you see. So they still don't have enough information, but we are trying our best. Mm. I mean, earlier on, I spoke to uh, Professor Carol and I uh, just talking about, uh, you know, men also, mm. uh, breast cancer being found in men. And, you know, she did touch on the issue of uh, stigma, you know, how do we then destigmatize this, you know, getting men out there to get into those healthcare centers to, to come and actually, you know, do the testing if they find that, look, there is something here. We, we, we do try, although they still don't believe. You know, when you educate at the clinic, they look at you as if you you mad, you know, mm -hmm. when you say um, breast cancer does affect male as well. It's not for, for women as well, but I would say um, two out of 10, they get interested. They want to know more information, but the other 8%, they like, no. They're not you know, interested. they're not interested because they don't think it's possible. They don't think you, you're telling the truth. You're telling what you know, you know. So, yeah, but we need to push harder and harder to this awareness and education to our community. Mm. Just uh, lastly, you know, how important is, you know, taking care of your own mental health, particularly if you are in a space uh, particularly when you find yourself that uh, actually you've been diagnosed with uh, uh, breast cancer, how does it really uh, affect you generally mentally? It doesn't only affect you. It affects you. It affects your uh, family as well. So it takes me back to what I said earlier on about support. We need support. Being a patient, um, firstly, it starts with your family. They need to be well informed about your sickness and your treatment and your side effects. Then they can be able to take care of you as a patient, you see. Because with them not knowing about the treatment and the, and the sickness it's itself, they won't be able to take care of you. So it starts with your surrounding people, your family. They need to be well informed then they'll be able to support you. And with you as a patient, you need to start by accepting, accepting that yes, I'm being diagnosed and this is not the end of it. There's light at the end of the tunnel. I will take treatment. Luckily, there is treatment. Mm -hmm. You're being diagnosed and there's treatment. You see, there's plan B. So you're taking your treatment and go forward and you will survive. Here I am after 10 years. Great story. You know, I hope that people will be motivated to go out there and seek the necessary care. But much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you very much. Who's Jeanette Ngabinde, who's a patient navigator there and a survivor of breast cancer, just share, sharing, you know, uh, how she went through the ordeal and uh, how she actually beat uh, breast cancer. She's here today, 10 years later, you know, talking positive, saying that, look, let's go out there and get the necessary uh, health care that we need. Let's take a breather. We're coming back after the ad break. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are approaching the end of the show and we are about to wrap up the conversation on breast cancer awareness. Now joining us uh, via Zoom in studio, that's Lorraine Govinda, who is the Cancer Association of South Africa's National Manager for Health Promotion. Lorraine, much appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having the Cancer Association on your station. We really appreciate it. Much appreciated. Um, uh, you know, I want us to talk about uh, the association itself, uh, the Cancer Association of South Africa, and, you know, your role in breast cancer awareness. Maybe let's start from there. Okay, thank you so much. So the Cancer Association of South Africa is a non-government organization, and we've been in existence for over 90 years, so that's really a long time. And uh, our focus areas, we have three pillars that we focus on, and that is research, education, and support. So the research that we conduct is used to help us to educate the public. And as we educate the public uh, and create awareness on the various top cancers affecting our country, we also provide support to patients who have been affected by some of the cancers uh, that are predominant in South Africa. Um, so, as you know, October, um, everyone comes awake and they think October is cancer month, but uh, the focus in October is on breast cancer. Um, so that's some of the awareness that we do is around education of, the, um, of breast cancer, the signs and symptoms, the support that's available, uh, now how to detect this cancer early. Um, so those are some of the focus areas for the campaign for October. Uh, I mean, Lorraine, you know, I want to know what increases your risk for breast cancer and is there anything that people can do, you know, to either prevent uh, getting breast cancer or lower the risk of uh, getting it? Because, you know, earlier on I spoke to Professor Carol Ann Ben just talking about uh, how now men are also coming, uh, you know, they are actually finding themselves having breast cancer. There, How can people make sure that they prevent uh, or maybe minimize the risk of getting it? Yeah, so so risk factors are anything that a person can you know, be liable to get the cancer. So, you know, some of the factors that, you, that we need to be aware of um, when it comes to breast cancer. So as you know, 1% of men uh, get a breast cancer, but among women, one in 30 women get breast cancer in our country. So that alone tells you that it's quite a predominant cancer. It's the number one cancer affecting women in our country. So uh, that alone tells you in terms of the sex. And then the age, um, as you know, with many other cancers, as we grow older, uh, we have an increased risk of getting cancer. But unfortunately, in breast cancer, uh, you'll find that there are younger people now that are getting um, breast cancer. In a family history, and, you know, I think this is so important because, you know, when you think about cancer uh, and breast cancer, often people, women don't talk about it. But there is a genetic predisposition to breast cancer, and therefore it's important for people to share information about their cancer with their family um, and their close relatives. So women with close relatives who've been diagnosed with breast cancer have a higher risk of developing this disease. If you have a first degree uh, relative, meaning your sister, your mother, uh, or a daughter in the family uh, that, that's been diagnosed with breast cancer, once chance is doubled. So even having a male uh, person in your family who has had breast cancer, this also increases your risk. And also a family history of prostate cancer, which is the common cancer affecting men, also puts people at a, a predisposition and they may have a 14% increased risk of getting uh, breast cancer. Now, a personal history of breast cancer, meaning that if you had uh, breast cancer and you now have another breast, um, you know, that hasn't been affected, you have an increased risk, three to four times more uh, increased risk of getting um, breast cancer. And then genetics, as I uh, mentioned earlier on, has uh, an increased risk for this cancer as well. Mm. So if we look at um, other risk factors, and this is something that we talk about every single day. So 
women who haven't had a full-term pregnancy or who've had a child after the age of 30 also has a higher risk of getting uh, breast cancer as opposed to women who have, um, you know, not um, had children. So, um, so not having children, having children after the age of 30 is a predisposition. Breastfeeding. Also, if you've uh, breastfed your child, you have a lower risk of getting breast cancer. Menstrual history. Women who've started menstruating after um, younger than uh, the age of 12 have a higher risk as well. Hormone replacement therapy. Now, you know, you've heard about people going through menopause and they always worry you to take something because I'm going through so much of symptoms. And we know that hormone replacement therapy is a risk for breast cancer. We don't say, please don't use it. We say, use it, but make sure that you are um, getting help from a healthcare professional, that you're having your tests done, that you're doing your self-breast examinations, because we all know that we need self-treatment uh, to help us with menopause as well. Mm. Now, lifestyle-related factors, things like alcohol, smoking, all of those things also increases your risk of getting cancer. And uh, obesity is also a huge problem. So if you are not exercising and walking and being fit, you also have an increased risk of uh, getting breast cancer. So these are just some of the, the risk factors. So again, alcohol, smoking, uh, unhealthy weight, less active, all of those things are risk factors for breast cancer. Lorraine, before I let you go, in the interest of time, I mean, um, how do we, you know, go about just in brief uh, uh, the necessary support for uh, breast cancer patient and also, obviously, uh, stigmatization? It's uh, it's you know it's very prevalent in uh, communities there. So, how do we make sure that we navigate through those uh, aspects? Yeah, you know, when you have a diagnosis of cancer, any cancer, not just breast cancer, it is a life-threatening condition. The first thing you think about is death. And um, today we have such good treatments, such good treatment modalities out in the public sector as well as the private sector. So you don't have to have doom and gloom, but it's important to support a person who's had cancer and more especially breast cancer. Emotional support is so important in a cancer patient's journey. Um, the stigma, you know, cancer is not a disease that um, when you touch a person, you're gonna get that cancer. It's not as a result of witchcraft. We need to remove the stigma so that more people can talk about their cancer incidents so that you can give hope to those who are sitting with a lump and don't know what to do about it. Um, so the Cancer Association, we have a WhatsApp support group so if you want to know more about how we support people through our telecounseling line, through our WhatsApp, all available in the seven languages, uh, seven to nine languages that's predominant in our country. Imagine that. Um, something that, you know, when you have cancer, you want to talk to somebody in your language that you're comfortable with. So please call the Cancer Association. Our toll-free line is 0800 22 or our website, it's www.cancer.org.za. And please, my words to women, don't hesitate to do your self-breast examinations every single month. Um, if you can afford it, if you are over 40, you have a family history of breast cancer, please go in for your mammograms. Go to your clinic. When you find that lump, don't sit with it and think, oh my God, the worst is going to happen. Because early detection can ensure better quality of life, that you get treatment timelessly, and your survival will improve if cancer is detected early. Lorraine Govinda, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening for such great insights about breast cancer. Much appreciated for coming. Thank you so much for having us. That's uh, Lorraine uh, Govinda from the uh, Cancer Association of South Africa there, uh, just talking to us a bit more about, uh, you know, their campaigns also and the importance of getting, uh, you know, that necessary care that you need. That's how we wrap it up for tonight's episode of uh, Soweto Today. A big thank you to our guests for this evening, Professor Carol and Ben, uh, Lorraine Nkabinde, and to the Cancer Association of South Africa for sharing with us this evening and making sure we are more equipped 
to tackle breast cancer for ourselves and our loved ones. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email. It's so it today at so it TV. So today. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us the number 081 531-8857. For myself and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobola has your primetime news up next. Thank you for watching. Good evening.